Coming up in the news, a change in the top command at the Royal Bahamas Police Force, a major challenge at the island's only hospital, and the Ministry of Education watching COVID cases as the new school year approaches. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Jamila Mizek. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping news tonight, a change in leadership at the Royal Bahamas Police Force to take effect in the Northern Bahamas on Monday. An official handing over ceremony taking place at the police headquarters in Freeport today. As Shashina Rolf Farkasin reports, the outgoing officer in charge is reflecting on his achievements here on Grants Bahama while expressing great confidence in the way forward for the island. It is with pleasure this morning that I hand over the remit of the North to Assistant Commissioner Theophilus Cunningham. Officer in charge of the Northern District, Senior Assistant Commissioner of Police Ashton Greenslade, expressing great confidence in the leadership ability of the incoming OIC for the North, as he regards him not just as a colleague, but also a friend. It was just 17 months ago, ACP Greenslade was appointed the top cop in the Northern Bahamas, an experience he remains grateful for. The first and foremost, thank God, for my tenure here. I want to thank the Commissioner of Police for allowing me to serve as the Commander for the North. I want to thank my team, my senior command, my contracted officers for their hard work, commitment and dedication to duty. As he recalls his time on Grand Bahama, he notes that it wasn't easy coming to the island after officers would have not too long experienced Hurricane Dorian and were now facing a global pandemic. To work alongside, to lead by example with my team. And at one stage, we had 200 officers out on sick leave with the pandemic. But despite this, Greenslade will leave behind an impressive mark on this island. From January 1, to now, we have recorded one homicide in Grand Bahama. And that is the first for a while. The last time that happened was in 1999. And again, in terms of traffic, we did our enforcement. They're still doing the enforcement today as we speak. And we did community initiatives reaching out to the public and I'm happy to report last this so far this year we only recorded four last year we had 16. With big shoes to fill the new top cop says he is ready to build on the foundation already left in place with a safer community in mind. I look forward with enthusiasm as we partnership with this team of officers to partnership with the communities and the business sectors who will definitely assist us in creating safer communities. This team, as a united force, moving forward, will police this district by the consent of the people and not by force. Greenslade adding that it was his relationship with the community and the media that gave them the ability to keep the island safe. I want to thank you, the media, who I had a great relationship with. I would hear from Shashina Rule every so often, who would give me word of encouragement. And if we had anything to discuss in terms of police-media relation, we did that. We get along just fine. Shashina Rule Farkasin, ZNS Network News. Now, Senior Assistant Commissioner of Police Greenslade will be transferred back to New Providence, where he will be responsible for the crime unit in the Bahamas. In other news, resources stretch to the limit at the Ram Memorial Hospital as the island's premier health care facility is facing a severe bed shortage. Tonight, the hospital administrator gives a candid look at another challenge they are forced to deal with during this COVID-19 pandemic. Shishin Rolf-Farkasin reports. 
The Rand Memorial Hospital is in a critical state with limited beds. Administrator Sharon Williams says the Rand is filled to capacity with patients now in the emergency room waiting to be admitted to the wards. Yes, they are in beds in the emergency room, but generally they are meant to be admitted to the ward. So they spend anyway to one to three days in the emergency room waiting for beds to be freed up on the ward services. But patients are not just waiting to be admitted due to COVID-19. The RAND has 90 hospital beds, and at this point, 84 persons are admitted. But here's the problem with the other six beds. But of course, that's across the various right. areas. We have some areas that might have a few beds, but we cannot put um, any other clients in those. For instance, we have 90 beds. So the free beds would be on our pediatric ward. I cannot put an adult on our pediatric ward, neither can I put a COVID patient on our pediatric ward. At last report, 30 persons were in hospital with COVID-19, but that number has since changed. Today, um, we would have seen some six persons waiting in the emergency room for bed with COVID. So if we had 30 yesterday, and that stands to reason that we're now in an excess of 30 patients. Once patients are significantly stabilized, then they have to be discharged. Continues and the patient continue to be gravely ill, then we have to rely on the overflow in our emergency room, which we have oversubscribed. There are too many patients waiting in our emergency room as we speak. So with the emergency room, do you have, is there a mixture then of COVID patients along with persons who are coming in for other uh, accidents and emergencies? How is that dealt with? They will not be in the same area, of course, we separate them. You do know that we have separate areas in the emergency room. So we're trying as much as possible to make sure there is a triaging of our patients and that we know their status as quickly as possible and we treat them accordingly. The administrator is once again pleading to the public to obey the public health measures put in place to avoid ending up in hospital, particularly at this time. Shashina Rolf Arkison, ZNS Network News. It's day two of an apparent sick out at the Grand's Bahama Health Services. Hospital Administrator Sharon Williams confirming to ZNS News that staff throughout the Allied Health System have called in sick again today and that those services will continue to be impacted. Well, tonight, one family is speaking out about the apparent sick out as they are feeling the impact of the delay in services at the Ram Memorial Hospital. Shishin Rolf Farkasin has more in this report. Glenda Knoll says she, along with her family, had to rush her mother into Grand Bahama from Abaco to see the doctors. After paying for a charter flight and hotel, they are now feeling the impact of the sick out, as she contends that her mother has some challenges accessing some services she needs. The situation is uh, the Marsh Harbor Clinic had referred my mother, she's elderly, to the Rand Memorial um, in reference to diabetic complications. But in the exam here at the Rand, they found that she needs to have a surgery. It was scheduled for yesterday, but that has been delayed due to a sick out that the um, hospital is now going through. As well as another family, a good friend of ours, her son is in intensive care um, and they're trying to give him oxygen. Um, he has complications as well and they were trying to fly him if this doesn't get resolved to Florida because there's some persons over there who want to send a plane. She says that particular family member is now in the process of chartering a flight to the U.S. because they are afraid that the services needed may also be delayed. Knowles also says this is now becoming a scary situation. The sick out is impactful and you know these are people's lives and this is critical. Um, I don't understand the politics behind it, but it needs to be resolved because family members, uh, and first of all, you can't get in to see them, so it's apprehensive enough. You know, I haven't seen my mother for three days. I'm actually coming to bring a telephone so we could do a video call, and uh, basically, it's stressful. 
on families. But she adds that despite their personal situation, they are also empathetic towards those in the health care services who are also dealing with a lot due to COVID. Well, right now you have to look at it from the point of view as well as the nurses because they've been overworked, they've been overstressed. They are working in a very dangerous environment to begin with. As a matter of fact, it's ironic you should ask that because my cousin, one of the healthcare workers, she herself was flown into Nassau two days ago, the same time my mother came down here, simply because she was exposed to COVID. She stays home, she doesn't go partying, she doesn't do anything. So the healthcare workers, they themselves, we have to empathize with them. They themselves are stressed, but in the meantime, it, you know, the backlash is coming to us because I'm, I'm certain this is going to affect someone's life today. Shishina Rolf Arkison, ZNS Network News. The island of Bimini now on a 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew after being on a 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew for weeks. Prime Minister the Most Honorable Dr. Jupit Minnis noting this week that the change was due to the decrease in COVID-19 cases on that northern island. Well, Assistant Administrator for Bimini Deidre Fox says residents are happy about the amended curfew hours. Right now, the Bimini district is um, holding in regard to the COVID cases, um, persons are happy for the curfew change to from um, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. because the businesses will be able to more or less cater more to the public, to the tourists that, that are here. Germany is a really touristic district because we have the fast ferry that comes into Florida still and we have the cruise ships that come here in addition to the yachts that really frequent the shores of Germany. So the extra two hours are good for the merchant. Now, a number of Bimanites have so far received the jab, and Fox notes that more residents are welcoming the idea of being vaccinated. She's encouraging residents, especially those on the family islands, to take their health seriously. I think um, the residents of Bimini are looking more pro in regard to the vaccines. We still have some of those who are hesitant and being cautious, but we still have residents who really considered and decided that they, they would get vaccinated because of the tourists that come here and they had some sickness here, of course. So they want to be more or less paying more attention to the households and the persons in their house so that they in turn don't get sick. The hospitals are overwhelmed and the morgue is compromised. So try not to get sick because the hospital really don't have nowhere to put you. And you will have work the clinics and the family islands that much harder because then the, the medical staff in the clinics in the family islands will have to tend to you. And that means they will be overworked. So people really need to pay more attention to their health and well being so that we all could more or less um, stay safe. We are just weeks away from the school, the start of the school year rather, and officials from the Ministry of Education say they are paying close attention to the increase in COVID-19 cases in the country. As Jamiko Knowles tells us, there is still no word on which method of learning will be used for the public school system. As the COVID-19 cases continue to rise in the country, concerns are mounting among parents as to the preparations they should make ahead of the new school year. Education officials are providing this update. As far as schools opening um, is concerned, uh, our administrators will return to school Monday the 16th. Um, all teachers are expected to, school, to return to school on Wednesday the 23rd of August and our students are expected to return on the 30th of August, 2021. Now the question as to whether or not schools will reopen using the face-to-face -face method. District Superintendent of Education Ivan Butler says the format in which it reopens will be made by health officials and the competent authority. Last year, this district was fortunate to operate in a face-to-face -face mode, um, but considering the COVID-19 situation in the country at this time, specifically on Grand Bahama, we are not sure what mode we will operate in. And so we await um, word from the Minister of Education as well as the competent authority, and we will be guided and directed by their instructions. 
There are three models of which schools can operate, fully virtual classes, fully face-to-face, -face, and a combination of both. As for schools on the island of Bimini and Abaco, he says the decision will be made based on the amount of cases reported. The minister would like to take each island and uh, the situation in each island um, differently and see how exactly what is the situation before a decision is made on every island. And so again, some islands may be fortunate to, op to operate in a face-to-face -face mode. Again, that depends on the amount of or the lack thereof of infections on the island. And with the new school year just around the corner, Butler says they are encouraging teachers to take the jab. I try to lead by example and I have taken the vaccine and so we encourage all our teachers to take the vaccine but again that is a personal choice and so we just rely on parents, teachers and all our stakeholders to use discretion and take it as they wish. And although the Pfizer vaccine is now available for adults and young people ages 12 through 17, he says it will not be mandatory for them to return to school. For Miko Knowles, Seren S Network News. You're watching the Northern Edition. Stay with us.